The Nigeria Bar Association warns FIRS over the amendment of VAT laws, while court has ordered Lagos and River States to maintain status quo. Plus, National Security Advisor General Babagana Mungono warns IPUB to stay clear of Anambra elections, and we also are going to be examining the sit-at-home order. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The Nigerian Bar Association and prominent senior lawyers have warned the federal government and the Federal Inland Revenue Service, the National Assembly, against any illegality in their bid to amend the value-added tax law in the country. Also, the Lagos State House of Assembly passes the state's value-added tax bill into law. The Court of Appeal has ordered both Rivers and Lagos states to maintain status quo on the collection of value-added tax. Now, this all sounds like a lot, but joining us to discuss and break this down is uh, Barrister Jide Ologun and uh, economist and co-founder of Awaba Nigeria, Tunji Andrews. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, so I'm going to start with you, Tunji, because this sounds um, like a lot. A lot of people are wondering why, um, you know, River State, then Lagos State, and other states are at some form of a loggerhead with the federal government over VAT. A lot of people are paying VAT, but they really do not understand what it is. So help us break down um, this conversation, especially why it has gotten to this point, where states are asking the federal government to refund um, so let's start with the conversation around the fact that this is VAT value added tax um, and it's a tax that is uh, paid on um, activity, business activity basically, uh, buying and uh, selling of certain items. Um, the, the, the general problem and the reason why we're here is because of the laws. Uh, they are meant to be laws that speak directly to VAT in Nigeria. Uh, that should have been enacted or put into the uh, constitution of the country. But uh, it doesn't seem to mention it. The constitution goes very silent on what uh, VAT is or who should collect it or uh, in what circumstances should it be collected. So what we are seeing is a situation whereby uh, the states have gone to the uh, courts to determine the fact that since it is not in the um, recurrent list or the concurrent list, it is being viewed as a reschedule. And uh, that means, or at least in the eyes of the court, it means that the states should collect it. The thing I do see, and I, for me, I think it's, it's um, a big assumption by most of the states, uh, there is the thought that um, if we collect the VAT in our domain, it means a lot more money for us. Um, and especially because um, so the major states pushing it seem to have a lot of economic activity within their domains, and, and specifically River State and Lagos State. But they must also remember that um, the fact that, a, let me say MTN, for instance, is headquartered in Lagos, doesn't generally mean that all the activities of MTN across the 36 states of the country, plus the FCT, happen in Lagos. So it means that if this law is to go through and all the states are to uh, pass on their own VAT laws, that means MTN would have to split its VAT into 37 bits and then pay each state um, its due uh, as at what it gets from each domain. Also, the federal government would have to look at it from the perspective that if the states are deciding to keep their VAT, then the gov federal government too should keep its VAT, which is uh, which it collects off uh, issues like importation and the rest, which of course is a major part to what is being shared. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, I think um, we need to either go to the constitution and properly create a law. Um, of course, this is what you're, uh, the, you're speaking about with the lawyers are saying the federal government should not uh, do a back channel situation. I think we should have more um, engagement, but I think the bigger part is uh, 
I would rather prefer everybody stay um, and let the full matter be decided uh, instead of uh, going ahead to say, okay, now start paying VAT to us as a state. Because this raises confusion for, for companies. If a company decides that, okay, the, the state says start paying me VAT and the company starts paying VAT to the, to the state and then it is determined in three months' time that you should pay to the federal government, that means what the a company paid in VAT to the state, it, it's not be double payment. So mm. it's, it's a big issue. I, I think we should let it, you know, be fully def, uh, defined by the courts or uh, the National Assembly via uh, the uh, constitution of the, uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Um, Barcelona, I mean, he's talking about the courts here. Now, according to the law passed by the Lagos Assembly on Thursday, the value-added tax would be administered by uh, the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, as we know, the LIRS, at the rate of 6%. Now, do you think that this rate, of course, is delivered, judging by the FRIS 7.5%, um, because he's saying that the courts need to be to, to decide this. Is it something that you think is within the jurisdiction of the courts? I, I believe it's like an incentive to quickly generate a lot of revenue through the value-added tax. Now that uh, Dr. Wike is blessing the trip of challenging the legal framework around it. But let's lay a foundation to why we are here. You know, if you look at the statistics that came out of the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria generated a total of 1.53 trillion Naira revenue from value added tax in 2020 and up by 39.3% when you compare it with 1.18 trillion Naira recorded in 2019. And of course, that was also an improvement on the 1.11 trillion Naira generated in 2018. And the position of Governor Wiki before we went to court is that, okay, if in my state I rule out contract of about 200 billion Naira, and you expect that contractors should pay value added tax to the federal government from this contract. What about states that are not ruling out contracts? So, where do I, if I have to pay that chunk to the federal government, where do I find money to develop my state, knowing that I'm involved in a lot of projects there? And the argument also, legal states tap into it that fine. If we are contributing so much to the federal government and we get a pass rate, hence we go and you know, begin to challenge the status quo. And don't forget that Wiki came from the angle of the learned. He has come to look at the law because he has found a lacuna, what we call lacuna in law, which is a gap in the law. So let's go back to the history of value-added tax. Countries introduce value-added tax when their tax regime is not satisfactory. And in the case of Nigeria, it was introduced in 1993 by the military government then. And sales tax was under the jurisdiction of the states before that then, but poorly administered. And that law has been, you know, amended several times. And then uh, what, what people are saying generally is that we feel the impact of this enormous tax that we generate in the society. And here we are now. You need to also cast your mind back to what happened recently in the country when NNPC came out to tell the world that the Federation account may be expecting zero remittance. Hmm. And it is from that Federation account that money is distributed to the states. So the states found themselves being confronted with this, you know, an impending stagnancy and serious crisis. So they began now to look around for how to remain viable. And as of today, I think about three states in Nigeria have gotten the claim uh, slate, the claim certificate of being viable in, mm -hmm. in, in, in operational performance. And so where do you go from there? Are we going to scrap the states? And the states are now saying, let's begin to restructure this country, perhaps starting from uh, the tax structures that we have. And that if you now get interested in mobilizing tax in your environment, then you encourage industrialization. Don't forget that in Kano State, for example, according to the law, which tends towards Islamic uh, doctrines, 
that sell of alcohol. Oh, the come on. You're going to make that case that Governor Wike made, really? Exactly. You know, so if I bring in tax from the consumption of alcohol in my state, and you want to collect it, and you don't allow it, and you want to share this... But, 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 but when the sharing alcohol. formula is done, Mr. Logan, it, I mean, they don't say, oh, this is beer tax, this is beer VAT, so we'll share beer VAT. It doesn't work that way. I mean, he was only just trying to, you know, buttress a point. But I don't think that that's how these uh, monies are being shared. But just hold that thought. Let me go back to um, Tunji. Tunji, um, let's put back that graphics on, on the screen. We see that in all of the monies that is being taken by, by the federal government and states, states are taking 50% of VAT. Um, local governments earn 35% and then 15% goes to the federal government. So the states still seem to have more uh, in terms of the sharing formula. Or maybe I'm just looking at it uh, from a layman's um, perspective. Absolutely, you are right. And um, it's, it's the conversation I had earlier to um, the impression of most states about what they are pushing. So, for instance, the federal government actually contributes more to that kitty than the states. So it is a case where the federal government puts in about 40 to 50 percent, but only takes out 15. Think about it. So if the federal government believes the states want to keep their own part of it, then the federal government too should keep its own. Now, also, there is the conversation around who owns what VAT in what territory. That is very critical, because if, um, for instance, uh, um, the River State Governor is, is speaking about um, the VAT. Um, it must be clear that the VAT will only apply to economic activity that happens within his state. Now, we must also remember that the headquarters of most of the uh, uh, economic activity that happens within his state do not actually reside within his state. So, <clears throat> I, I don't think we've thought this through properly. I, I don't think as states we've, we've looked at how it is. Now, I must be honest about one thing. It is unfair for a river state, for instance, to be generating a lot uh, and share almost equally with a uh, state somewhere in the country that isn't generating quite as much. I agree with that. And those are conversations that need to be had. And I honestly believe that we should restructure the way VAT is being collected. Mm. But in this conversation of what we, we do in our state is our own and let everybody uh, just go and face theirs, it will bring up more than we've thought about. It will definitely bring up more than we thought about. In fact, as a matter of fact, all the headquarters of the businesses that are situated in River State are in Lagos. I, I'm not sure he's actually thought about that. And the economic activity actually happens in Lagos. So the question is, who will they pay the VAT to? Hmm. So for me, I think it's it's a question of let's let's look at it in a proper perspective. And um, let's, let's also look at it from the perspective of uh, passing a proper law that is fair and equitable. As against, you know, I guess, of course, in the way that um, if one entity has gone in the very extreme of the opposite, the first thing you do to bring them back to the table is to go to the other extreme. But I think um, where we need to come to is that middle point where we all agree that, first of all, the law, for, for, for instance, what we're working with in this context is actually a decree from, I think, 1993. Um, which was a military decree. So we need to create one on, under our um, democratic dispensation, which is equitable, which is fair, and which works for not just the federal government and the states, but also works for the local governments. Ah, interesting. And you see, in all of this, we're, in all of this, that the conversation that we're having, local governments haven't really said anything. It's just the state governors who seem to be, uh, you know, uh, making most of the noise. But let me come back to you, Mr. Ologun. Um, Still looking at the law here. In Lagos State, Section 16, Subsection 2 uh, of the law here requires that an importer of taxable goods pay the tax on the goods to the LIRS um, on the tax on goods. So before clearing these goods, you have to pay that tax. So how do you think this is going to be implemented, plus the fact that we're having this imbroglio between the federal government and the state governments? 
when we already have that law? As of now, you know, let's look at what happened in River State. In the case of Atanjara or River State versus Federal Inland Revenue Service and the Atanjara of the Federation, the court said that taxes such as value added tax, holding tax, tertiary education tax, and the National Information Technology Development Agency level, amongst others, that are not listed. Under item 58 and 59 are outside the jurisdiction of the federal government of Nigeria. So there is a gap in the operational law already. And the court further noted that if you look at the provisions of item 7A and B of part two of the second schedule to the constitution of Nigeria, you know, does not extend the legislative competence of the National Assembly beyond capital gains. So these things are there. So right now, it's like trying to correct a lacuna. And what the federal government is doing, talking about FIRS, is to proceed to the Court of Appeal. And so as we speak now, the judgment in River State stands. And Lagos State, that has power to make laws within her jurisdiction, has come up with laws. And whether they will be able to implement it or not is a different ballgame. But I can let you know that with the experience that state government have encountered with the federal government that is threatening them that they may need to look, look elsewhere for revenue. Don't forget that the oil sector contributes over 80 percent of revenue to this continent. So if NNPC is threatening that we are not going to be making contributions to the federation account, where will the money come from? We still have the Zanfara in, 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 in uh, the Zanfara gold over there. Okay, don't also forget that recently the Petroleum Industry Act came to the front burner. And under the same act, we have 3% prescribed for uh, host communities, while 30% is prescribed for frontier states, states that do not currently have oil, but we have to search for oil. So I think where we are right now is testing the provision of Section 17 of the Nigerian Constitution that talks about the social order of the country. And it says that freedom, equity, and justice shall be our platform of coexistence. And the big question now is that from the tax regime, the tax structure that we have, can we claim to have justice? Can we claim to have equity? So it's beyond just the figures right now. And I think that is where I agree with um, that we need to come to the table now and dialogue. And that, again, is if dialogue has any relevance in this country. And don't forget that we are talking about the value-added tax now. What about the law, the other laws, like the anti-open grazing laws that are coming up? And, of course, if states have the power to make laws, for example, recently in the northern part of the country, Kano specifically, we read about laws that forbid boutique owners who use money queen to display goods. So I think states are now trying to emphasize what they value in their environment. So the federal government can now invite all the states. Beyond this value added tax, the 36 states of the federation, they have gone to court. They have sued the federal government on stamp duties. So the battles are on right now, and it is all about can we have the commonwealth of this nation for the common good of the people. So, Pastor Logo, does this mean that, I mean, because many have also argued, I was listening to the radio today, and someone actually said that this is more political than in the best interest of the states and local governments. But, but from the conversation that we're, we're having tonight, it seems more like we're testing the waters for restructuring, we're testing the waters of viability of states. And just as Tunji said, if it comes down to it, um, will the states really be comfortable with it if we all decide that, you know, to your tent or Israel? You know, the wise man said that necessity is the mother of invention. There, we have what we call cause and effect. Obviously now, except those who pretend that they are not monitoring trends, the federal government has been making statements to the states to find their level. In the area of security, even some governors are telling their citizens to find ways of protecting themselves. So, and these states do not want to go bankrupt. They do not want to fizzle into irrelevance. So they also begin to look at the laws and identify gaps. Whether we like it or not, until the Court of Appeal pronounces otherwise, a gap has been discovered in the value-added tax uh, regime. 
And like Mr. Tuji said, you can come together, call all the states, have a dialogue, have a conversation, and see how we can proceed. And the only way out is to bring justice and equity to the front burner. You know, look at the interests of the nation, interests of the states. We are talking about tax now. What about managing insecurity? When the power to manage security is domiciled on that in the exclusive legislative list, you, you, need to, you need to wait for an inspector general of police that is controlled by the federal government for you to effectively manage security in your state when people have been clamoring for state policing. So these are the issues. So right now, whether you like it or not, whether you pay attention to it or not, I think Nigeria is ripe for restructuring. Talking about these laws that are coming up, particularly this value-added tax, Gombe State is begging uh, some of the states that are now going to court that it should be their brothers' keepers. And the response from some quarters is that if you want to, if the value you have to add to Nigeria is to be propagating banditry around the country, then maybe the Atom General of the Federation should identify those who, are, who he claims they have, you know, identified as sponsors of Boko Haram, get that money from them to put into whatever they want to put. So we are talking about resources now and the engagement of resources. We have not even delved into the region of how much Nigeria is owing. As of today, the Federation is owing about 32.11 trillion naira, as against 3.12 trillion naira in 2015. So economically, we are in shambles right now. And I believe that whether we are testing the waters or testing the mountains, some activities must begin to come on stage now to ensure that we secure the future of this country. And we get those who should listen and engage to listen and engage. And that is where someone like me, we support what we are having right now in the country. And don't forget, we are going through the judicial processes and the legislative processes. Nobody is bringing out guns or arrows now mm. to negotiate. And I think that should compel the federal government if they know that your gaps can work against you and begin to do the needful. Okay. Commonwealth, no, common good. Okay. Back to you, Tunji. Um, this is, this is a, a fling from what we're talking about, but let's just go there. Uh, revenue sharing formula. If we're now talking about how to share VAT or asking that um, stamp duty monies be re refunded to states, do you see any, anything happening in that area of our revenue sharing formula, especially for states that think that they're the ones who are responsible for the commonwealth of the nation? Oh, definitely. Um, there is going to be an issue there. Um, I already see it. I, I already see it. Uh, there is a lot of assumption. So um, a, a state like Ogu State, for instance, um, Ogu State houses uh, a lot of industrial activity that happens within the region of Lagos, uh, Ogu, um, or, or Yo and the rest. It's, uh, they, they house quite a large number of industries. But you see, most of those industries are domiciled in Lagos. Um, the question starts to come up for a lot of those states who has what VAT, what VAT is mine, what VAT belongs to the other uh, uh, state. And it starts to create a lot of confusion. If it is not very clear, if it is not very clear, because we need to also be able to identify um, what is economic activity within your domain. Because this, this is why... Um, the law is the law. What the law does is that it not only defines the issue, it also then interprets the issue to explain how the law should be um, um, implemented. So, for instance, it would describe that on such items as ABC, you can collect VAT on this. Now, on such items that are a, B, a, D, C, E, whether it is in your domain or not, it should go to the uh, companies, whatever, whatever. So it, it's, it's, uh, it takes a lot of explanation and interpretation. With those interpretations missing, what we are opening the door for is chaos. And we already see it happening. The people that will suffer the chaos are the businesses. And I feel sorry for every single business in River State right now because um, you are scared of the FIRS. You know that if the law eventually gets to the side of the um, FIRS, you know that you're going to be uh, in serious liability. You're going to pay a lot of fines. 
If for some reason, um, because the state is there and you don't pay those uh, VAT uh, charges to to the states, the states will lock up your uh, your um, uh, operational facilities and you can't work. So the businesses are the ones that will be in the middle of it right now, and I really feel sorry for them. As concerns sharing, we don't even know how we're going to share it, and I know that the states have not really thought about it through. It's a case of let's just go to court, let's have the conversations first, and we'll, we'll decide all of that later. Because you can't just say every VAT that happens within my domain belongs to me. Because, I mean, the, 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 the domicile conversation might not even belong to you. Um, so at this point, it's it's... It's unclear. It's unclear. But I do know that if this goes through, the federal government will keep its import tax. Every single import tax that comes to the federal government. For instance, one of the things you said about Lagos State talking about importation, uh, the um, anything that is imported, VAT yeah, on it, duties, yeah. that will still keep um, uh, at the at the hands of the federal government. I don't think they will let that go. That is probably one of the federal government's uh, main sources of income. Why would they let it go to, to Lagos State? I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense for them. Um, Lagos State will have to fight. And, but, it, you know, but, but it does, um, but, but it is somewhat of a right for Lagos State, so why wouldn't they want to let it go? Well, you can look at it that way. You can look at it that way, but the port was not built by Lagos State. Let's, let's remember that. The port is a functioning federal government entity. It might have been situated in Lagos, but it's a functioning federal government entity. Um, so in the, in the longer... Because let, let, let me look at it this way. Imagine this being the fact that um, a big company is situated in Lagos State. It's operating out of Lagos State. But because its major factory is situated in Abelkuta, then... The state government there says all the VAT that happens in this company should go to that state as against Lagos State where the headquarters is. It's not going to happen. Lagos State is not going to allow it. So you see the confusion. It's already started. So it, it, it's, a, it's a problem. And I don't think this is the reason why I keep saying let's let this thing be fully interpreted before we start, you know, implementing it. Because if we don't, it will only cause a lot of problems for businesses. And businesses will not want to be caught in the middle. So they'll just have to pay uh, 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 the fees that uh, are due. Mm. Well, Jido Logun is a lawyer. And of course, uh, um, Tunji Andrews is an economist. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for helping us to understand uh, everything that's being said uh, under this particular argument. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Nigeria. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be talking about what's happening in the Southeast and the Citadel order. Who's in charge here? Stay with us.